Welcome to Virtualize Everything. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to install XCP-NG on a Lenovo M710S. This is the new set of systems I picked up for the channel and doing things like this. So you most recently probably would have seen this system in my under $200 virtualization server build. Well, this is also a virtualization build that would come in under $200. I'm not going to take you through the full system today, as we've already done that, and go back and look at that $200 budget virtualization server build video. But I am going to start looking at how to install XCPNG and see what the process looks like. Now, I've never tried to do this, so you're going to be right here by my side as we follow through. I searched up the site. It's a .org website, which I particularly like to see. So that's a plus in my opinion. I also see some GitHub information here, which I also like seeing because generally that means it's open source. And I believe this is open source. I, You can go ahead and fact check me if I'm incorrect in the comments. I would appreciate knowing more. I haven't done that research. The next thing I see is right front and center, a download button, which I'm liking what I see on this website initially. It looks pretty easy to use. So let's go ahead. Oh, here's more download information right here. Um, so we can get our ISO. I'm not on Linux and I'm not on Windows. So neither of these techniques are gonna work super well for me but we can click this button and it takes me right to the download. We get a download, so let's go ahead and download this. I'll be back with you when it finishes and we'll create a USB drive from it. Okay, so the ISO downloaded really quickly. It was quite a bit smaller than the Proxmox download. Um, I don't know exact size here, but we can take a look. So the size of this came in under a gig, which is kind of nice to see. Uh, small software is usually pretty lightweight, and but it also usually lacks quite a bit of features. So eh, could be a little worrisome, but we'll find out. Let's go ahead and flash this to our USB drive and try installing it. So right here, we'll select our file. We're going to select our USB drive and hit flash. Then we'll need to enter our system password and I'll be back with you when this finishes and we'll take a look at setting up the system for installation. All right, to start the installation process, I hooked up my system, inserted the USB drive into the back, provided it with a keyboard power and monitor feed, which you see being piped into the screen recorder right here. And then I booted it up all tapping the F12 key, which on this system brings up this particular boot manager. You may on your system need to use other keys such as delete F1 or F10 to get the correct option to do this if you're not using a Lenovo M710S like I am right now. To do this installation process, uh, or to start booting off the drive, I'm gonna use the down arrow key to select the USB drive and press enter. At this screen, it's gonna give me a bunch of different options. We're gonna install. We don't need to use an alternative kernel, I don't believe. All right, we'll select US here by pressing enter. And yes, so we'll press enter for okay. We're going to accept the EULA, so we'll hit the over arrow, enter. And we're gonna to want to use the SSD, which is already selected. And yes, I wanna use LVM, so. I'll just keep hitting down until it selects OK and press Enter. We'll use local media. So we'll select that, press spacebar, Enter. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we want to verify installation source. So again, we'll press Enter. Looks like it verified OK. So we'll just press Enter, ask for a password, press tab so we can confirm it and press enter and enter again. Um, 
So it looks like it wants static. I don't have Ethernet hooked up for myself, so I'll press down and space, and then it's going to ask for an IP address. We'll give it an IP address. It look, it's looking for a subnet mask and not in CID notation. So it's going to be 255, 255, 255, 0 for my network and my gateway address. We're not going to use any VLANs, so we'll continue on. And now we select it OK. We'll hit Enter, and the host name will work OK. Going down for DNS server, we'll give it one dot and we'll press OK. We're in America, so let's scroll down and hit enter. And it wants to set our time zone by knowing what city we are in. So we'll scroll down, look for New York, press enter. And yes, it can use an NPT server, so we'll press enter. And I don't have one, but it looks like I can press enter through it. Okay, so it won't let me do that without a server address. So let's manually enter time for today is 1.31, and the time is right from my system clock. So we'll hit OK. Now we'll select Install XCP. So now that it's finished the main core installation, it's asking me if I want to install supplemental packs. I'm going to move over and say yes and press enter, and we can try local media. I don't know if anything's on it. Uh, we'll skip verification right now. Try uh, yes. All right, so it looks like nothing's on it, so we'll just hit go to back, and we'll say no. But it's now asking me to remove my USB drive, so we'll do so, and then we'll press enter. We can do a straight boot up. All right, so it's telling me EFI is not enabled. If I do end up using this video, we'll be back in a few minutes. After giving it a few minutes, it did boot up, and we're presented with a fairly nice to look at configuration screen right here that gives us all the information on our server, keyboard time zones, and all that fun stuff, as well as some information about configuring virtual machines and whatnot. So after entering the IP address of the server into my web browser, I get a screen that looks something like this. And it offers some documentation and a couple of different management tools. I'm going to go ahead and try this Zen Orchestra and click Quick Deploy. Ask, giving me a username of root and asking me for my password. I'm going to assume this is the password that I used when I installed. And let's press Enter. So that's interesting. I'm getting an error message here. I'm not quite sure what this password is. Okay, so I found out the problem of why I couldn't start Zen Orchestra from this particular web interface or to set up the web interface here with XCP is that I was using Brave Browser and there's some type of incompatibility. So I've loaded into the server now with Firefox and let's try the quick deploy of Zen Orchestra so we can get a web interface that we can actually work with. I'll enter my password. This time the password actually works and we're able to start filling things out. So we can set it up on local setup. Uh, we'll try the server's 201, so we'll try making this 202, subnet mask, and we'll enter our gateway. And we'll leave DNS alone, so let's press next. We don't need to create an account. Password probably should be filled out. All right, let's press deploy, see what happens. So this is spinning saying deploying. I don't know how long this is going to take. But I think what we need to do is enter another IP address. So let's go 202. <coughs> so once it was done deploying, we were redirected to the sign in page here. I'm going to go ahead and bookmark this just so I have it for later. I have no need if I'm going to need it or not, but let's do that. We set up our username as VE and let's enter the password. And it looks like we are into the web interface for 
xcp-ng. I'm going to cut this video off here. In future videos, we'll be exploring more about how to deploy VMs on this and really just checking it out and seeing how things work. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider in liking and subscribing to help virtualize everything grow. And as always, have a good night.